everyone. Today, we're going to be giving our preview to the American Diabetes Association's Scientific Sessions Conference for 2022. We've been absent for a couple of years due to the pandemic, uh, but we can gladly say we'll be there this year. Now, although we may not be getting some of the major uh, breaking news that we're used to at the American Diabetes Association's conference this year, we feel that there are a variety of things that are still very clinically applicable. And that's actually what we're going to be focusing on as we go day by day, giving our top pick uh, for each day. So I'm going to start off by heading over to Kevin. Kevin, what are you looking forward to on day one? Really looking forward to getting back to a face-to-face -face, uh, Congress again, a face-to-face -face ADA. So really excited about that. But my pick of the day, first day of the conference, is actually the statins in diabetes session. A couple of things I'm looking to get out of this. It's well established, isn't it, that statins do indeed cause diabetes. Previous studies have shown 40 milligrams of atorvastatin number needed to harm of 100 to 200 in terms of causing a case of type 2 diabetes. So I'd like a bit more insight into that relationship but also some top tips on using statins to get down to these tighter LDL targets that have been proposed by ESE, European Society of Cardiology guidelines over the last couple of years to reflect that the high residual cardiovascular risk of people living with type 2 diabetes. So I think that'll be a really useful uh, practical session. What about you, Amai? Anything you're looking forward to on day one of the Congress? I guess for me, the, the one that caught my eye was the updates in type 2 diabetes management uh, in pregnancy. Now, uh, the reason is, I guess we've had a lot of data for on the today trials that we've seen, I think previous ADAs actually, we've seen today one to day two. And also from a UK perspective, there's been a lot on youth onset type two diabetes, uh, the UK uh, national diabetes audits and the pediatric national diabetes audits. Perhaps not as much data about pregnancy in, in the UK, but I mean, that's something that's gonna be coming. But I guess for me, it's the clinical outcomes and, and, and kind of moving forward with technology. So I wonder the impact of hopefully, you know, these uh, insulin uh, delivery systems potentially, but also the insulin monitoring system. So continuous glucose monitoring and, and flash glucose monitoring in this population, in this, in these areas, I'm hoping to hear a bit more about that. And also, hopefully, you know, we've known about today data for some time. Maybe things are being done now, perhaps to kind of see if we can improve that. That's what I'd like to hear. And I think it's actually really relevant from a UK perspective as well. And uh, Patrick, what about you? My pick of the day is definitely going to be the mitigating ASCVD role of uh, kidney disease. Uh, you know, we all know about that, that strong link between uh, uh, kidney disease and adverse cardiovascular events so and in fact make you know the majority of the burden of cardiovascular disease of people living with diabetes is actually with those people who've got that uh, complication ckd so so actually looking at tools i know there the are new drugs out there and maybe there's more new drugs coming along as well but it's really how that all knits together to improve the quality of the lives and the lengths of lives, hopefully, um, uh, of, with of those people who've got uh, diabetes and CKD. Um, what's your pick of the day, Amrit? What I'm looking forward to, actually, it's quite a sobering session towards the end of the first day, which is looking at suicide and self-injury, unveiling and addressing the hidden nightmare in diabetes. I think this is certainly an area that uh, perhaps needs more general appreciation amongst uh, clinicians because it is something that is unfortunately relatively common in patients living with diabetes. We know about the association between mental health illnesses and long-term conditions and diabetes in particular. And I say from a personal perspective, I've unfortunately uh, experienced in my own clinical practice patients, unfortunately, who have suffered from, from, from these situations. So I'd be really interested to hear about um, uh, you know, any latest evidence in that area, what to do, what to look out for, and, and potential ways of helping helping uh, patients living through those situations. So uh, that's what I'm looking forward to on day one. Kevin, what about day two? What are you looking forward to there? The session I'm going to pick on uh, day two is NAFLD in diabetes. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is now the leading cause of transplantation in Europe. Pretty scary, isn't it? Closely associated with type 2 diabetes. So again, I'll be looking to get a couple of things out of this session. Uh, first of all, how to identify you know, my patients living with type 2 di diabetes are at highest risk of progressive liver disease of, of NAFLD, but also better use of the newer therapies. Again, specifically GLP-1s, SGLT2 inhibitors and uh, incoming next year to Zepatide as well, which have all actually been demonstrated uh, to, of course, cause weight, but also independent of weight loss to cause regression of fibrotic liver changes. So I think it'll be a really interesting session, very relevant session to all of us working as HCPs in the UK too. Amma, what about you? What's your choice on day two? Day two is a bit interesting. I think for me, there was a couple of sessions, but I guess you had to pick, you only gave me one session to pick. So I guess it's the towards the end of the day, between 4 and 6 p.m. on that Saturday. Uh, it's a symposium which is looking at time and range. Uh, is it the new, new treatment paradigm, really? Or um, 
glycemic monitoring way, way of glucose monitoring in a way. Um, we've seen you know, a lot of it from the UK. We've been one of the best in the world in terms of getting that technology access so that we can look at time and range. I'm interested to hear it from a kind of more global perspective, and I'm hoping ADA covers that from a global perspective because of you know changes in different health systems and access to these technologies, whether they, they truly believe that or whether they kind of you know, mention that and you know, put that front and foremost. And also just after that session, there's a, as part of that same symposium, is a bit on precision medicine and precision diabetes management um, by the ADASD, so a joint statement. So both, that, that whole session would be quite interesting from my side. Uh, Patrick? Still on this theme of cardiovascular disease, I suppose it's it's about this residual risk beyond LDL. So I'm old enough to remember when statins were new, and uh, never mind PCSK9 inhibitors and azetamide. Uh, so it's um, so actually just looking beyond LDL, and and it's been a graveyard, quite honestly, of a lot of different uh, therapeutic uh, treatments. Um, so I'm I'm just fascinated to see you know what the current thinking is from experts and, and, and hopefully some insights about what's going to change in, in the next, well, maybe even in the next year. I, I know there are some things which are likely to come to the UK. And I'm still trying to work out where they fit into clinical practice. Um, Aaron, what's, uh, again, yeah, what's, what's your, your take, take on, on, uh, on that day? That's something that I'm really looking forward to is a session on timing of eating and exercise in metabolic health. I think really this is something very topical for both people living with diabetes and even if you don't have diabetes. It's something that I get asked a lot as a GP, um, both in my practice, but also by friends as well. When should they be exercising? What effect does that have um, on their metabolic health, on their metabolism uh, and metabolic parameters? Um, but also timing of eating, especially now that we have so many different types of diets that are available, particularly intermittent fasting as well, which I know many of my friends and colleagues uh, partake in. I'd just be interested to hear what the latest evidence is there, so I perhaps can have a more informed discussion with my uh, patients in clinic. So back over to you, Kevin. Day three, hopefully we're still uh, energized. Uh, what's uh, looking good on Sunday for you? is improving diabetes care for older adults. I know this, of course, is a, a passion of AMAs, but very relevant to my own clinical practice. Over 25% of my list size is over the age of 65, and a lot of them do indeed have type 2 diabetes. Uh, and I know we've had some great guidance uh, consensus published in the UK, including by uh, our colleague and body AMA, but the particular conundrum I'm looking to, uh, to get an uh, answer to, to get out of this session is the use of SGLT2 inhibitors for the older, frail person. We, knew, we know SGLT2 inhibitors can cause sarcopenia, worsening frailty, but we also know SGLT2 inhibitors help reduce the progression of heart failure and CKD, two big contributors to frailty. So quite a, uh, quite a dilemma, quite a conundrum. So I'll be looking some insights in particular to the use of SGLT2 inhibitor for my older frail adults. Amma, what about you? For me, I guess, the, 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 about midday on that day, there's a professional interest, professional interest group meeting looking at the use of social media in communicating science. And I mean, I think you can see why we're all four of us here are very, you know, uh, we'd like to think, you know, doing that. Um, while we're here actually at this point. Uh, but also, you know, I guess I can just see from a, a different perspective what, what, what the considerations, what they're looking at, um, the different ways of things. I think it's, it's moving forward with that. We've, I found social media, and I'm sure you all have, uh, one of the most important tools in terms of information and, and, and finding out about information, um, especially on conferences, but otherwise. So I, I'm interested in that. I think that'd be a good one to go to. So I'm definitely going to that. Uh, Patrick, what about you? Well, they say Sunday fun day, but I'm not so sure why one is so fun. I'm talking about, I think, a really serious issue, which is about uh, the management of obesity um, in people living, young people living with type 2 diabetes. I, th I honestly think this is going to be the epidemic of our time. Um, you never mind what we're seeing now. I'm seeing young people, um, uh, you know, in the, well, we see how young this is, but there, there will be very young people who are developing type 2 diabetes. And there's also a whole load of health inequalities uh, and ethnicity issues, which are certainly the UK, and I suspect all nations uh, are struggling to, to tackle. And I think we, if we can't look after our youth, they're our future, aren't they? So, so for me, that's such an important subject. Um, and so I'll be there, definitely. Uh, and uh, uh, so hopefully sending those messages uh, uh, that uh, Mar says are so important through social media. Um, so is Sunday fun? It going to be a fun day for you, uh, Amrit? Uh, I hope so. Uh, however, the session I'm going to it's quite heavy, I think, but I'm very interested in going to it. Uh, titled New Hope, Old Challenges in Heart Failure. 
heart failure clinical trial. So there are two parts, um, two sessions essentially. One is what's new in this field and the other one is clinical conundrums. I think this is so, so relevant because we've seen a plethora of clinical data, changes to licenses around uh, anti-diabetic agents used now for heart failure management. And hopefully we'll see even more evidence uh, there. But what I'm really interested in is those clinical conundrums. How do we put that into practice? Uh, so it's something I'm looking forward to. It is a Sunday afternoon, however. So uh, I'm hoping that they'll keep us all engaged and entertained, but definitely something I think that we'll have a lot of learning from uh, and looking forward to. Kevin, Monday, what's looking good? So Monday, my topic of choice or session of choice is definition and interpretation of remission in diabetes, that perennial hot topic for us in primary and, and secondary care. Not a week goes by without a patient asking me if they can reverse their type 2 diabetes. However, of course, the, the controversy is that definition of, of uh, remission of diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Uh, we have a number of different rem uh, remission diagnoses, uh, sorry, definitions, even within the UK. We have the original direct trial uh, the definition of remission. And then uh, we had a joint position statement from the ABCD, Association of British Clinical Diabetologists, and also the PCDS, Primary Care Diabetes Society, uh, that both Patrick and I sit on, which perhaps took a slightly stricter view, and Europe and America say something differently. So uh, I'd be really looking forward to this uh, session to see if we can get some tips again on defining uh, uh, diabetes remission and hopefully some, uh, some consensus as well uh, for something that is a very powerful message, isn't it, for our patients living with type 2 by diabetes? Diabetes. It's given them hope that type, their type 2 diabetes is not inevitably a progressive condition. Great. So what about you, Amar? What's your uh, top session for Monday? Well, my session for Monday is probably one of the main sessions I wanted to go, want to, go to actually over the whole ADA conference. It's the future of insulin therapy. I think more so in this, in this year, the 100 years of insulin year, um, when we look back on what, what we've, what's been achieved with insulin, it's important to look further down the line and see where is this going. Um, we, I expect to be conversations around oral insulin therapies, once weekly insulin therapies, smart insulins, um, and maybe a few other kind of things where, you know, about, I guess, the right regimens or using the right insulins in the right places. I, I think this will be very relevant for a lot of you know, secondary and primary care populations, especially now we've got a good number of insulins already, uh, but also, you know, what, what can we do next? So that for me, that, I think that's, that's going to be a really interesting session. So looking forward to that. Uh, Patrick, what are you going to be breaking down the doors to try and get into which mm -hmm. session next? Or oh, it's, it's always the stuff which is just over the horizon, I hope. So, so the title of uh, the session I want to go to is the next wave of incretin uh, therapeutics. How may they impact care? So I, we, I think we've got, we, all of us know it, that, that these therapies are going to be perhaps a great tool to deal with conditions like NAFLD. Um, um, maybe NASH um, and uh, 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 the obesity, which I've mentioned in the in the last session, is 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 sure to be there. But but it, it really is this. It is what I'm really looking forward to the session because I'm not quite sure what's going to be there because I know there's there's really some great different uh, uh, combinations of these therapies. Remember, we've had these single incretins and then we've got dual incretins and and. And, and I, I, these are going to be triple and who knows, I, maybe there's even more than three. Um, so I, I, I don't know what it's going to be. I may come out being disappointed. That sometimes happens. But but I, as I said, it, I, I, it's a real hope, I think, for the future. Um, and um, yeah, so that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, Amrit, are you uh, going, uh, to going to an exciting, exciting session? session? I'm always going to exciting sessions. Um, and in fact, it's, my session is so exciting, it has an exclamation mark in the title. So breakthrough, uh, effective treatments for diabetic kidney disease. So much has happened in this field. Uh, I, I say that about so many different elements of diabetes, but it really has for diabetic kidney disease. For so many years, there haven't been new therapeutic options. And in the last couple of years, we've really seen that change. Just like London buses, you know, they all come along together. So I'm really looking forward to seeing perhaps a bit of a review of the last year or two in terms of uh, new new products and new licenses, but also what's on the horizon. And I believe there will be some talk about uh, new molecules that uh, may also add to our armory of uh, managing diabetic kidney disease. So definitely an exciting session uh, and something uh, to take us through to the end of Monday. So the next day is the final day of the ADA conference. Uh, Kevin, I'm not sure whether you'll be walking in or crawling in, uh, but which session will it be that you, you attend? Well, I think uh, I suspect Patrick and I will both be at this session on dual incretin therapy. 
uh, definitely a session that uh, Patrick will need a cool shower uh, af afterwards. And very timely, of course, isn't it? Just uh, on uh, just uh, earlier this week, Friday the 13th of May, um, we had uh, uh, official approval of tazepatide, Mount Jaro, uh, a twin catrin for the management of glycemia in people living with type 2 diabetes. So very relevant session. We'll hear a bit more about the molecule itself uh, and also uh, hopefully some top tips of where it fits into current treatment paradigms. What are your thoughts on that session, Patrick? I presume you'll be there. Oh, you'll you'll have to fight for your seat uh, if I'm going. I'll definitely be at that session. Yeah. So I, I, as he said, that this is really the future is just about. It's landed in the states, uh, and I suspect in the you know this time next year. This will be a therapy option uh, for us all in the UK and, and for that matter, the rest of Europe. So, so yeah, it's, it's uh, I think it's titled uh, The Next Frontier. They always have these funny titles, you know, with dual incretins. But, and I think it'll actually be beyond uh, tizepatide. I suspect there, there are other molecules out there. So, so there's a bit of overlap from the previous day, but, but I, I love this class of, of, of agents. I think uh, ultimately there's a... a uh, term I, I've I've heard recently about meta uh, you know uh, bariatric medicine and I think these agents are now hitting at that sort of weight and it gives us another option for those people who who perhaps don't want to to have a once and for all surgery. So I, I, Amar, do you, what are you going to do on the final day? That is a very good question. Um, well, I guess being the final day, and there's not too many options, I uh, probably gone for something that is, I'd like to think I know a little bit about. And so kind of just seeing, taking it a bit easier. So it's about diabetes and dementia, but looking at causes and preventative strategies. And this is a very, you know, another area that's close to my heart that I'm working. Uh, I think what's interesting is would be kind of, from where we've been, I've been talking about it for the last few years, we have moved on a little bit. We know a bit more about the trajectory of, of cognition and, and glycemia and the impact of that, but also there are a few trials now looking at um, cognitive function as part of as part of bigger trials, so some of the cardiovascular outcome trials, but also uh, some dedicated you know, Alzheimer's disease trials actually with uh, GLP-1 molecules. So I think that's what I'm interested to hear a little bit about where they go with that. And also in, in the setting of pre-diabetes or at risk of diabetes, things around there. So I think this is gonna be, there's actually gonna be something to be added to that conversation, which I've been having for a while. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, Amrit, how are you going to close out this uh, this uh, conference? Well, I'm going to close out by going to Zeitberger's of Metabolic Health. No, it's not a new healthy option on the McDonald's menu. It is a, an interesting session by the sounds of things um, and a very much a quintessential ADA session where you're not quite sure what you're going to get. However, it appears to be something that will focus on biological rhythms, the circadian clock and the interaction with metabolic health. Um, something that uh, I think is growing in interest uh, and I think it's an area of research that it may uh, give some interesting insights into how there's an interplay between the two. So that's how I'm going to close out my ADA. I'm hoping it will be a good session to, to end the conference. Um, and I think we've all mentioned some very interesting uh, sessions, some perhaps more uh, practically applicable than others, but nonetheless, all very interesting. It's going to be a very busy conference. The first time we've been there in a couple of years, and we're really looking forward to it. In today's preview, I've really been strict with everyone and just asked you to give us one session for each day. But actually, when you look through the agenda, there are lots of interesting sessions. And we're hoping we'll keep you up to date across our social media channels on the various sessions that we mentioned in this video, plus others as well. So please keep, uh, uh, keep an eye out for that and keep following us on Twitter and on YouTube and on LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, we hope to keep you informed. So whether you're at ADA or not, we hope you, you'll feel as if you're part of the action. But for now, that's all from us. We'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.